So where we uh, left off last uh, day, I think we, uh, I think we uh, left off uh, at uh, Viria, Viria Perfection. Is it Viria or? Uh, uh, it was patience. Yeah, it was. Viria or uh, Kanti? I think it was Kanti, right? Right? It was Kanti? Uh, yeah, I'm very Kanti. Okay, Kanti. So uh, then what's up next? Kanti and then Satcha. Satcha means uh, truthfulness. Huh? So there was a perfection, uh, there is a perfection uh, on uh, truthfulness. Satcha means uh, always uh, being truthful, right? So, um, yeah, so uh, what were your thoughts about our last uh, uh, lesson on uh, patience, uh, the perfection on patience? Varsha, do you have any thoughts? Um, I thought it was interesting, Hamdani. Mm -hmm. And Tarusha? Uh, same as Varsha. It was interesting. Uh, you always will come to agree and disagree because uh, we have a very open space to talk about because there's no one way to look at it, right? But we just uh, discuss uh, what we see in the books. Uh, said Ovindu uh, Ovindu, he like they were here for some time. So I have no problem. Uh, I mean, it's not a problem with Varsha and Tarush, but I was just asking what their thoughts are. Okay, so uh, what is the fundamental place where we find uh, that we need to be truthful in Buddhism? Can you, can you recall a place where we are asked to be truthful? Uh, hopefully all the time. Yeah. I didn't hear you very well. Sorry? Yeah. I think it was Dilek or Avindu? That was me. Oh, it was me. Okay. okay. Yeah, Avindu, go ahead. Uh, usually, hopefully all the time in Buddhism. I don't think... All the time. But do you remember kind of a place where... We already know that uh, we, we need to be truthful. And there is a saying, there is, a, there is something that uh, we, are, we already say in Pali also, I think, that, that we all know probably. Remember that, please? Uh, I said the how about, Yeah, how about the five, five precepts? Do you find anything about truthfulness in that? Um, do, you, do you remember five precepts? Did Bhante Sumedhi give you five precepts today? Uh, Panatipata, not taking, oh, not taking, not, not, not taking, mm. not uh, uh, killing, Adinnadana, not uh, uh, stealing, not taking what's not given, uh, Kamesu Michachara, what does that mean? Kamesu Michachara. Huh? I don't know how I'm doing it. Okay, you have no idea. How about those uh, others? Ovidi, I'm asking about the translation, but what's the meaning of uh, some of the precepts? So, Panatipata means not killing, right? Adinadana means not stealing. Kamisumichachara? Uh, it's like misbehaving. Misbehaving. What kind of misbehaving is that? Uh, like... How do we, how do we uh, look at it? I would probably say like... Um, I'm not really sure how I'm doing it. Oh, this is uh, more about adultery, you know, in a relationship. Adultery seems to be a big problem. So misbehaving in that bigger context. And then there are other ways of misbehaving, like, uh, you know, drinking too much, right? Tasting too much, seeing too much, hearing too much. 
uh, they're smelling too much. All these are, you know, too much level. That means uh, misbehaving, right? So we are not behaving well. Let's say you are too much into anything, that means there's a misbehaving part. Then Musavada. Um, I think it's incorrect speech. What is it? Incorrect speech, like that's uh, a new name, new term for me. Incur. What is it? What is being incorrect there? Correct speech and incorrect speech. Darusha, any any thought about it? Well, incorrect speech and correct speech. Yeah, correct speech. Uh, maybe I I would ask from Dila to himself. So then. What is uh, correct speech and incorrect speech? I mean, I guess like talking like, how do you say this? Speaking, wait, let me think about it. Okay, can you give me a second, how about Let me think about it. Yeah, Say. you have think, any thoughts? Um, I think it would be like a, being truthful all the time and not lying. Okay, being truthful all the time and not lying. Say any thoughts? Like maybe not using your words to hurt someone, like being mean to people, something like that. Okay. That's another part of uh, bad speech. Now, staying truthful, can we be tr truthful at all times? Can, can we be truthful? Varsha, any thoughts? Let's, let's take a real, uh, real life scenario, you know. Varsha, I think you have any thought. You have a, you have a thought, like with an example. Um, uh, there's normally the thing where you can't always be truthful because sometimes there's a circumstance where if you say the truth, then you can end up provoking an argument or something bad at that moment. So I'm not necessarily saying that saying the truth is a bad thing, but when you say the truth, you often have to find the best time to say it both arguing and I knew that one of my friends did something bad and I knew that the other friend needed to know about it but if while they were arguing if I said that it would only make the argument worse so I would probably wait until they were things out and then at the end I would tell uh, my friend and then they could make up about it later mm -hmm. so there are some issues right any other thoughts Obi? Well, I, I agree with Varsha. You can't, like, you can't always be truthful all the time. Like, I'm not saying that, like, you have to lie, but um, it's like... How does that go, actually? I mean, if we can be truthful, what are the situations that, that prompt us to be uh, not truthful? Or in what sense? Um, I'm pretty sure there's things called, like, white lies. That's basically when, like... White lies. Okay. When someone asks something, but you don't want to hurt their feelings. So if like, if someone says, oh, do I look good or something? And then you have to say, oh yeah, you look good. It's not like you're going to say to them, oh, you're really ugly. Because that's just not fit for saying something like that. So you're, you're kind of forced to do it. Okay, so it is about personal looks, right? So can we be a little bit moderate about it, like not saying good when it is not good? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is not good at apparently, but so saying it is good probably it's a bad estimation, I guess, evaluation. That person might be, you know, getting a wrong, uh, I guess, uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. I mean, which is not true. Let's say you listen into a talk and you say it's the best talk, the most talk that I ever heard. But it is not. Also, I'm pretty sure jokes might fit into this category. Jokes? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, so jokes in the sense of, uh, you mean like pranks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think what we had to discuss about this uh, truthfulness is uh, uh, intention, I guess intention part so what is your intention of doing this right so if your intention is uh, okay then uh, i mean if it is not going to harm that person right sometimes some of the jokes uh, some of the white lies take somebody to a very uh, difficult time right 
So uh, if you don't have such situations, then I think probably you manage the situation. You don't want somebody to be upset, right? So this is the situation. Uh, let's take a very serious situation, like a terrible situation. Somebody is coming to, uh, I mean, this is kind of a very old example to talk about uh, an intricacy about uh, a difficult situation about staying truthful all the time. Somebody is coming to kill someone, maybe to harm that person. So another person let that person in. Let's assume this is a house and the person who is gonna attack who wants to attack that person is uh, asking, did that person come inside? Did you let him in, let her in? So, I mean, with the idea of always being truthful, if that person is to say, okay, I'm not lying to anybody. I haven't been lying to anybody. I'm very truthful at all times. So yeah, he came in and then I asked him to go uh, into that room or something, right? That's a very, you know, good thing to think about. That person might not say, I mean, that person is very um, thoughtful, wise. He or she might say, oh, you didn't come here, right? To save that person's life. So that's why we have to understand how to practice uh, this musavata, I would say, truthfulness. We have to understand uh, sometimes when we are truthful, there are that, that could lead to some of the commotions, fights, arguments, uh, criticism. So we have to be careful. Let's say if it is an academic audience, it's fine. If it is a place where you really need evaluation, it's fine. But if it is a situation where some people are getting hurt, attacked, killed, uh, you know, uh, something happens badly, then we have to be careful. So we have to then practice how to avoid this situation with whatever the case. Because later on, you're going to say, that uh, I had to tell this because I want to protect everyone. How is that idea? Is it a good idea? Because you protect everyone, but be careful. How are you going to do that? So in that case, so staying truthful at, at all times is contingent upon how are you going to handle the situation, right? Okay, so how does this apply to, okay, we actually could not finish the last precept, so not telling lies and then not uh, taking beverage, food and beverages, which would lead you to, to um, a situation where you don't make sound decisions, right? That is, it's not, not taking alcohol actually, right? So that was a practice in the olden days. So you know the level of your food and beverages, right? Okay, so now we understand not telling lies is a fundamental human virtue that the Buddhism always encourages everybody to practice. So, the five precepts, is it a Buddhist teaching? Is it a Buddhist teaching or was it existing, existed even before? Before no. the Buddhist time? I think it's more like a universal truth. Maybe. It is pre-Buddhist actually. It is not, you know, it was not, it was not, it was not invented by uh, the Buddha. It was there before. There are normal uh, virtues. Yeah, Varsha? Um, because um, Buddhism, I think, is based on philosophy, I think this is the sort of thing where it's been gathered by many philosophers. Varsha, I, have, I still have the issue. I don't know what's, what's happening on my side. I can hear all the others. Uh, there was a sound issue, I guess, like a mic. I think you can hear her, right? Yeah, I can <laughs> hear me, perfectly well. I don't know what's going on. Let me see again my speaker. So you have your mic with the headset, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, keep talking, yeah. Oh, wait, can you hear me? Yeah, I think it's better. Okay, I'll try speaking louder. So I think... Um, I think it's the sort of thing where it's been created, developed by philosophers for a really long time. So it's the sort of thing that's been there with people, but it hasn't been the sort of thing that's been declared. So basically, people think of truthfulness and, you know, all those virtues 
patients as something that is needed as day to, for day to day life, but people don't really think of it as a philo people really didn't think of it as a philosophy because they were so used to it by their daily daily life. By and then that's when Buddhism was introduced, where it's th their teachings are like a philosophy where people can really listen to uh, to these things and know what it actually means. So I think it's more like the thing where it's developed. It's not really something that it was really declared. It was something that was being developed over the years. Mm. Yeah, great. Yeah, I, I think the most important thing with regard to not telling lies is that you are not cheating on anybody. Like this is a bigger concept. Let's say you now cheating happens even today's world. Like between two people, I guess, between spouses, uh, partners, uh, between uh, employers and employees, between companies and business people and customers, right? How many how many uh, people are being cheated sometimes on business, right? Say that this is a good food, healthy food, right? And people start buying it. At the end, they un don't understand. They're going to consume a lot. They're going to say this is super food, healthy food. This is, you know, pe people can be fooled, you know. This is the main understanding behind uh, uh, Musawa that actually is not cheating by saying it. It is not just that that you say something literally, that this is incorrect, right? Okay, so how does this practice apply to uh, a bodhisattva? Now let's talk about that. So bodhisattvas are, you know, they are the main uh, topic in our series of lessons. So bodhisattvas are people who are individuals who are going to become uh, Buddhas, full Buddhas uh, in one life. So, uh, what do you think? So, do they practice this as a perfection? Yes, this is what we are talking today. We call it such a, let me, let me write it down, type it here. Yes. Yeah. You get it? Yeah, such a. So, such a means. Uh, uh, truthfulness, actually. That means truthfulness. Uh, so, such a paramita. Now, the bodhisattvas practice uh, such a paramita, I would say, perfection on truthfulness in how many ways? We talked about this many times. Three ways. Right? So, bodhisattvas, because they are going to be full buddhas. Call it Samma Sambhutta. The second category, Pachek Buddha. Third category, Arahant. So, uh, Samma Sambhuttas, they are the ones who should be the Bodhisattvas. The Pachek Buddhas, it was different individual. And Arahant, it's a normal uh, person, uh, but that's the least uh, enlightenment. So, the highest is the uh, full awakening. But it doesn't matter which uh, Bodhi, which type of enlightenment you are seeking for. Okay, so bodhisattvas practice uh, such a parami, perfection on uh, truthfulness in three ways. Such a parami, such a upaparami, such a parma. So the general uh, perfection on truthfulness, and then such a upaparami. Okay? Second degree of uh, perfection on truthfulness, and the highest degree of what is called paramatta parami. So what is uh, the general uh, level, I would say, the normal uh, perfection on uh, perfection on truthfulness? It is just that you are not uh, lying, right? But uh, as we know, uh, when we talk about the bad speech, does it only include uh, not lying or lying? Are there any other aspects of uh, bad speech? What are the other bad levels of, uh, in aspects of bad speech? Say, any thoughts? I mean, like I said before, if you are mean to someone with your words, that could be considered bad speech too. Okay, so that is not lying, right? That is a different aspect of uh, bad speech. So, that, so what, what do we call it in Pali? We call it parusavacha. We call it parusavacha. That's right. That it here. Parusa. Parusa means parusa means uh, hurtful words. Huh? Vacha means uh, words. 
So parusa, parusa vacha. I would also consider bad speech as like swearing and not using the correct terms of words. Yeah, swearing. It is also a kind of hurt, hurtful speech, right? So you can mm -hmm. hurt someone. But what is swearing in this context? Swearing, people can swear. Especially in our culture, people swear very much, <laughs> right? Uh, in our culture, I don't want to name that culture, our culture. People, I don't know, I mean, they just literally, they say, okay, do you have any thoughts about it? The swearing part? I think I think people don't understand it is swearing. They just say, you know, they just say. Yeah, I think, in, especially in our culture, I think it's just something automatic. Uh, people it's just automatic. Say. I don't know why they don't think about it, you know. Like, you see, like, the simple words, like, that we don't even think of them. Like, they're, they're still bad words. They're still sore words, but... Sure, like yeah, one, of, one of the words that I'm going to not repeat in Sinhala, but I would say, uh, talk about, uh, what is it regarding? Something about the sky. <laughs> uh, lightning, I guess. Seven, seven lightning kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's, that's really a bad thing. Somebody is wishing somebody's death, having that kind of a very bad attack from the sky. You know? I mean, people don't think about it. They just say, you know, you'd have done this bad thing. We actually thought it's not verified too, right? That is one thing. So um, I think I think uh, people have to understand what words uh, do they use, especially in, in any country, be that the culture that we were born or we were raised and the culture that we are in. Uh, do you find that swearing that much uh, in the culture where we are now, Ovini? I found do people I found, do that? Yeah, a lot of people do. Okay, but and we don't I, know the intention. Like a lot of people, they don't really care. It just happens automatically. They're so used to it that they just swear in their phrase. And then there's also some people that just do it to like be cool and stuff, which isn't very cool. Do people swear with a very bad mind, bad intention? The swearing part has something really interesting. Like, some people do it very terribly, you know, very seriously. You know, they are like shivering. They are very, they are so evil minded. Mm -hmm. But some others they just say, you know, like a like a cool thing, right? Yeah. Any thoughts, uh, Tarusha? Just listen to us. Any thoughts about it? No. What do you see? No thoughts so far. No. Set. Okay, so uh, as Buddhists, we can't swear. Especially in the Middle East, if you swear, you, you will be given the death punishment, I guess, death sentence. In the Middle East, if you do that, if they think it's a very bad thing to do it. So I think it's, it's about uh, how we use our vocabulary, how we use our language, phrases, you know, this cultural language too. So you have to be very careful. So what's the other part you said, Ovin? A swearing and the other one? Uh, it wasn't me, but I think Sataya said like um, being mean to somebody. I feel uh, like being people, mean, yeah. I feel like so, using the word hate is something that like it's such a small word, but it's really deep that can hurt a lot of people for a long time. But unfortunately, the people who are mean to others, they always have a reason to be mean. If you ask them, you know, he did this to me, she did this to me, so I have to be mean to that person. What's a good response to this question? See like it? Because no, nothing happens without it, without a reason, right? So, yeah, for sure. What, what could be a good response to this this question, this, this statement for those people who say that we are very good, I'm so good, I'm nice, but that person was very bad, and so I had to say something. I had to say, I had to be mean back. can so, you clarify the question, please? Yeah. So. Uh, it is always we can see that people who are mean to others have a reason to be mean. I mean, the India version, I mean, I'm not saying there's a reason. They say they have a reason to be mean. So how do we respond to this question? I mean, like, there really shouldn't be any reason for anyone to be mean. There shouldn't be? Honestly, like, everyone should be very kind to each other. But if they do see a reason, then I really question what that reason is. And hopefully resolve it that way. 
but because there really shouldn't be any reason for anyone to have any hate towards anybody. How do we, I mean, I mean, how do we handle that kind of a person? That kind of person is very, uh, like, uh, I would say, so much freaked out, uh, so angry, you know, you can't even have a conversation, right? Yeah, Varsha? Um, I'd listen to their story, like, why exactly they were angry, and like why what ha what happened like what what makes them so angry that they literally hate this person and then i'd probably give them a piece of advice like what is the point in trying to get revenge when they're like what are you expecting what is your point you know if you're going to if someone says something mean to you and you try to say something mean back which normally happens very often then like what's gonna happen is you're just gonna be in an endless loop of hatred. But if you just end it that way and go like, okay, what you said was really mean, but I'll forgive you. Then that way you're finishing what happened without really making it such a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ovidi, that's a good thought, uh, Varsha. Uh, I agree with Varsha and I also think that like, if if somebody was being mean to you um and you felt like you felt sad and stuff and but you're doing the same thing if you were being mean to them you have to first think oh that now that person is going to feel the same way that i felt when they were being mean to me or when i got embarrassed when they were saying something to me that would probably be my response to somebody if they were saying why they were being mean to the other person i would say well imagine what the other person felt feels when you be mean to them they felt the same way that you felt when they were being mean to you so something like empathy right looking at look i mean i mean you looking the situation in that person's shoes right okay so but 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 the main thing that those people can complain is that there was unfairness to that person this was unfair to me so I had to do something to that person, right? take revenge or something, right? especially this happens uh, between partners, uh, spouses, um, lovers, <laughs> uh, friends, it can happen, right? Because they think that I was mistreated by this person, I was, I was uh, misused. So it's not very easy for them to understand. They were very much together before. But yeah. Uh, in these situations, I would probably like just ask them why they were trying to get back at the other person. And usually it comes down to a matter of like, uh, they deserve some sort of, of like red, like revenge or something for what they did. And then usually if they're like atheistic or they don't believe in like a religion, uh, they'll be even harder to handle. Because if they did believe in a religion, you could always reassure them that like the religion will take care of it and they don't have to like play a part in like judging the other person but if they're like more of like atheistic or don't really believe in religion you can always reassure like the legal system could take care of it because they they're out to get some sort of like revenge and the on, only way to like kind of like reduce that from violence is to like reassure them that they're gonna get revenge yeah, in some other way don't you think that good communication will solve many problems in any issue like this fairness unfairness revenge meanness i think don't you think that because there is there's a poor communication between two people but having a lot of expectations both to be this way that way and then these problems come in because they don't talk they don't they don't have a you know uh, communication well every day on a daily basis because you know like a friendship uh, a love relationship they are daily stuff like you have to maintain them you know on a daily basis like not today you do today well and tomorrow you are not doing it for a week you are not doing it. and then again you are trying to uh, do something for us so i think it's, it's all about communication and you can solve many problems yeah Varsha. you raise your hand right oh no 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 i'm sorry okay <laughs> okay so now we have come to a point that 
uh, like one part, aspect of this bad speech is uh, lying and the other one is hurting. Uh, because of the time, I wanted to uh, mention the other two. The other two are uh, talk behind the back. Okay. Now, this is very dangerous. Actually. You know, people do it just to get some favors and then to see the, uh, you know, uh, what you call division, right? So we have to always speak in a way to unite people, unite society, society right? That is the good speech. Uh, and but a lot of people politically, even sometimes uh, religious-wise, uh, culture-wise, they speak in a way to divide other people so that they can catch up, catch up on one, one certain group in a family, in a other kind of a place, this can happen. So the most important thing is speak the words that can unite everybody. That is uh, not talking behind the back. So that's the third one. The fourth one is not talking uh, frivolous um, conversation, not, not engaging in frivolous conversation. I would say not being an idle chatter or a gossip. A lot of people, they gossip, right? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not saying about you. I mean, sometimes all folks, because they have nothing to do, just, you know, talk about that. Buddha, Buddha said that that is a... Uh, waste of time. So this time is precious. Actually, this is not the time. This is our life. Now we say it's one hour, two hour, one day, two months, and one year. No, it's our life. You see, oh, one year has passed, but it's, it's not the time. That in the end, it is our life. A certain part of our life has been gone, has been finished. That's why the, uh, the moment, the time, every moment is such precious so that we can be better people, uh, and then to have a very really successful life. So, anyways, so these are the four types of bad speech: not sorry, lying, talking behind the back, or divisive speech, uh, hurtful uh, hate speech, or hurtful words, and then uh, what we call gossiping or idle chatting. So, fundamentally, somebody both these actors they are avoiding this. When it comes to uh, such upaparami. What does bodhisattvas do is bodhisattvas even engage in the uh, good speech, I would say, no, truthfulness, even something happen, can happen to their bodily organs. I mean, you can do that. I mean, bodhisattvas, they do. Even the Pacheka Buddhas, they do. Even something can happen to their bodily parts, but still they want to engage in the truthfulness uh, conversation, truthfulness uh, behavior actions. And then what is uh, such a paramatta parami is even by sacrificing their life, their whole life, they, they still want to continue being truthful. They are truthful, uh, you know, verbally, they are truthful both verbally and then even risking their bodily parts. And then at the third level, highest level, they are truthful. Uh, Verbally, at the same time, even by risking their whole life. That's how they practice the perfection of uh, truthfulness. So that's the main, uh, uh, you know, subject of today's uh, lesson. Any, any questions so far? You take one more minute. Yeah, Varsha. Um, I have a question. So why do bodhisattvas, I know this might seem like a weird question, but why do bodhisattvas like work so hard on these perfections? Like what is the, what is it that is so important to them? What was the last part of your question? I understand oh, the I, first one. Why do they so much, why, why they are so much hard on these practices? Yeah. And the second yeah. one? Um, my second question was, um, what makes it so important to them that okay, they want important. to perfect it? Okay, so, so in order for someone to become a fully Buddha, they must practice a certain set of virtues. So one of them is truthfulness. Because without, without fulfilling these practices, uh, they will not be able to be a Buddha. The reason is the Buddhahood is, a, is an outcome of uh, I would say uh, all these practices. So they must practice, otherwise uh, 
they cannot reach out to their last part. Now, a lot of people might think that Buddha Hodi is something that you just practice in one life. And you, you practice meditation and then you uh, attain Nibbana and you attain Buddha. No, I mean, before that, for many lives, I would say billions, trillions, many lives, those individuals have to fulfill, practice these virtues. So they are uh, going to be good vipakas, karma vipakas, I would say, results for them to practice meditation in the last life so that they can uh, speed up their enlightenment. So I think the, I would say these are prerequisites for someone to attain Buddhahood or Pacheka Buddhahood or become an Arahant. Even if you take a look at somebody in this life, oh, this is going to become an enlightened person, like a normal Arahant. That person must have practiced 10 perfections in previous lives. If you notice somebody who's going to be a Pacheka Buddha, then that person must have practiced 20 perfections in, a, in previous lives. If you see someone who is going to attain uh, uh, full Buddha, that person must have practiced 30 perfections in previous lives. So these are prerequisites, of course. So uh, the importance is that. Uh, According to the books, they must fulfill these uh, prerequisites, otherwise they can't become Buddha because they are prerequisites, right? You can't go to a university without going to a school, right? I mean, it's of course uh, clear that you should have a background knowledge about what you are studying. So uh, they are hard on it because if they are not hard on it, they will deviate from the practice. So they will not fulfill them uh, in time. So they have to be a little bit, I, I wouldn't say they are, they are going to be hard on it. I would say they are, they are very smart about it. It's like in today's, uh, uh, you know, this word called, don't be working so hard, you know, work so smart, you know. But this, this being smart and then work uh, can give you a lot of things rather than like in all of these people say, hey, do hard working. You work a lot of uh, in hard ways so that you can achieve a lot. But in today's world, no, I mean, it is not about how much, uh, how hard you do the work. It's about how smart you're going to do this, be that any uh, area of your life. So I think the bodhisattvas are very smart, but it takes time. It's, it takes time. Because it's a perfection. Make sense? Okay, so let's then uh, get ready for the next lesson. So I hope you have a very good day. Uh, we'll be here in a couple of days, in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Huh? Thank you, Hamadurne. Thank you. Hamad. We'll be doing the next lesson on uh, uh, Satcha and what's up next. Adithan also. Adithan means resolutions. So they have to practice resolutions too.